Hi folks, I'm The Lost Mapper, and in this video I'll be showing you how to create and edit multi-part features in QGIS. We'll be covering multi-part polygons, lines, and points. As of this recording, there is a bug that prevents you from adding multi-part features in QGIS 3.32. So for this video, I'll be using the most recent long-term release, which is 3.28, and that version does not have this issue. Uh, I believe this bug has already been addressed and will be fixed in the next release of QGIS. Thanks to TechDude, the moderator of the unofficial QJS Discord server for confirming this issue for me. So you may be wondering, what is a multi-part feature? Multi-part features are features that have multiple geometries associated with them. This might be easy to understand with some examples. So let's start with multi-part polygons. So I'm here on the National Weather Service website and they have a shape file which defines all the US states and territories. So I've gone and downloaded that, and I'm going to add that to a QJS project that I've created. So I'm gonna add that shape file, and we can see that we've got all these states and territories of the United States. I'll zoom in to the uh, main part of North America here. So looking at this zoom level, it might seem like each feature here, if I select these, is just made up of one shape, one geometry. But if you dig into some of the coastal states, you're gonna see that there's actually a bunch of little islands and little pieces. And these are all defined by separate geometries. So something we can do is we can open up the attribute table for this. And I will dock it. And if you click here, there's a button called Field Calculator, and we can actually add what's called a virtual field. So I'm gonna cl click Create New Field, and then I'm gonna check Create Virtual Field, and I'm gonna call this um, Geometries, and it's going to be an integer, and I'm going to use a function called NumGeometries, and I'm gonna call that with the actual geometry that is uh, for, each, for each entry here. And you can already see, I'm getting a little preview here. Alabama has 35, Alaska has 1,353. So let's click OK to add that. And now we can see that we've got this geometries column and I can click on it to sort by it. And let's zoom back out, so I'm gonna use the zoom history to get back to this portion. Uh, and I can click on these to select them and see uh, each one that I'm selecting, it's highlighted. And if I scroll down in this table, then I can start to see some of the states that have multiple geometries. So Minnesota is one of those. Uh, it's near a body of water, so it's likely to have um, some little islands and whatnot. And we can even have some fun with this, if this is your idea of fun. I can go to the label for that layer, and I'm gonna use a single label, and I'm gonna use that virtual field that we made. So geometries, and I'll bump up the size a little bit, and also put a buffer on it, just so it's outlined. And now we can see each of the states, and a number showing how many geometries that state has. Uh, and you can see that Louisiana has almost 4,000. So that's a lot of little pieces. A good example of multi-part lines are roads. So here's an example that's uh, pretty close to where I live. We can see that here, uh, the light yellow, we have Alabama Highway 117 crossing over US 11, uh, but not coming out exactly the other side. You have to travel down the road a little bit and then it comes down the other side. But both of these are labeled as 117 and are considered one road. So the way we might want to digitize that is by, uh, I can show you, if I select this 117, you can see it's both this line here and this line here, but it does not travel along US 111. So it's a single feature named 117, but it has two geometries, this line and this line. I asked on Mastodon about good examples of multi-part points. And I got a good, a few good suggestions. Somebody suggested uh, taxi pickup locations for a venue or building or park entrances for a particular park. 
Um, so I can show you an example of that. Here I've got a, a layer called park entrances and I have entries. There's two entries for a couple of parks. And you can see when I select uh, a park, multiple points show up. So that means a single park has multiple points associated with it. You could make these as individual points. Uh, it really just comes down to the needs of your project and, and what you're trying to accomplish. For working with multi-part features, you're going to want to make sure that you have the advanced digitizing toolbar on. So if you right click on any of the toolbars, you want to make sure that advanced digitizing toolbar is checked. The other way you can do this is going up to the view menu, choosing toolbars and making sure that advanced digitizing toolbar is checked. So the first thing we want to do is create a multi-part polygon layer. So let's head up to layers. We're going to say create layer and let's pick geo package and I'm going to save this inside of my project. So inside of this multi-part uh, and I'm just going to actually call this multi-part and the particular table or layer that we want to make, we're going to call uh, multi polygon and we're going to use a geometry type of multi polygon. And let's just give a single field called name, just so we can identify things. And I'll click OK. And now we've got a layer. We're going to enable editing, and then we're going to add our first polygon. So I'm going to click to map out some lines, and then right click to end that feature. I'm just going to give this a name of first. Okay, we've got one. Now, if I were to go and create another, draw out another polygon, this would be a separate feature right now. So I'll draw this out. Right click to finish. I'm going to call this second. And if I right click and open up the attribute table and dock that to the bottom, I can see that I have two features. Uh, why don't I save that real quick? And you can see I can click on them to highlight them. Now, if I wanted to add additional parts to one of these polygons, say that they say, say the one on the right represented a park and there's some additional pieces that are not connected to the original, what you want to do is again, make sure you're in toggle editing mode is on. And you're going to head up to the advanced digitizing toolbar and click on add part. Now, the important thing here is you want to make sure that you have the part, the polygon that you want to add to selected already. Uh, if I try to do this with nothing selected and I click add part, I get a message saying I could not add the part. There's no feature selected. So please select a feature with the selection tool or attribute table. Um, so we'll close that message. Uh, this time I'll use the selection tool. We'll click on that feature and then we'll head over to add part. And now I can draw an additional part for this geometry. So I'm just going to make a simple, another box and end that by right clicking. And now you can see that there are two geometries associated with one feature. So if I again, switch to one, the first one only has one, the second has multiple. If I wanted to add yet another one, um, as long as I have add part enabled, I can click and draw the piece that I want. So let's toggle editing off. We'll make sure that we've saved our changes. And let's do the same thing we did with the states and add a virtual field. We'll call this num geometries. And we'll use the expression editor to call num geometries on the geometry. Oops. And click OK. And now you can see it's showing me that the first one only has one geometry and the second one has three. So let's do the same thing for multi part lines. So I'm going to head up to my project home. And this is the geo package that I made. For the polygons, you can see I've got a table in there for multi-polygon. I'm going to right click on this and create a new table. 
and I'm going to call this multi uh, line. And it's a slightly different interface, but I'm going to add a field called name and it's going to be of type string. Um, and then the geometry type is going to be multi line. And everything else I can leave as is. And click OK. And I'm going to hide uh, the multi polygon layer and then double click on this table, the multi-line table, to add it as a layer. I will toggle editing again, and I will draw a line. And let's just draw a single line here, maybe with a little bend at the end. Right-click to finish it, and I will give it the name first again. And actually, let's close this table and open up the attribute table for the lines and dock it. Cool. And then if I draw another line and end it and call this one second. So we can see that we have two entries in our table. So same deal. If I want to add additional parts to a line, to a line feature, I'm going to select the one that I want to add to. And then I'm going to click add part and draw out another piece. And you can see it's not asking for the name because it already knows that it's part of a existing feature. And I will save that and we'll do the same thing again. Add another virtual field, num geometries. And this is, is not something you need to do. This is just me visualizing what we've done. So again, you can see the first one has just one line and the second one has three geometries. All right, I will close that table and we will do the same thing again. Head up to our geo package, right click, choose new table. We'll call this multi point. We're going to add a field called name. We're going to set that type to string and we will choose multi point as the type and leave everything as is hit. Okay. I will shut off the multi line layer um, even disable editing for it. And then I'm going to double click on multi point to add that. I will toggle on editing for the multi point layer and add a point. It's going to ask for the features attributes again. So we'll call this first. There's my first one. I will add another one. I call this second. And once again, it's the same thing. I'm going to choose, uh, use the selection tool to select the feature that I want to add more geometries to. I will click add part and then I can add to my heart's content. And if I hit save and toggle off editing, I will also then open up the attribute table and dock it. We can see that the first one has just this one selected and the second one has all of these selected. I want to make that symbology a little bit bigger. Make this eight. There we go. A little overdone, but drives home the point. And again, we can use the field calculator to add a virtual field called num geometries. And we can see that the first one has one point associated with it, one geometry, and the second one has nine associated with it. Deleting parts works pretty similar to adding parts. You're going to select your layer. You're going to make sure editing is toggled on. You're going to want to select the feature that you want to edit. So I will select this one. And then in your advanced digitizing toolbar, there is a button called delete part. You can click on that and then you can click on the parts that you want to delete. And then you can click save and toggle off editing. Now, if I come down here and I refresh this table, you'll see the number of geometries has updated. That's because I used a virtual field. So that's 
sort of calculated on the fly as you make changes. So I've enabled the multi-line layer here. I'm going to toggle on editing. And there is a tool here called Split Parts. And what I should do is first select the feature that I want to split. I can then click on the Split Parts tool and you can see it's a crosshair. And I can essentially draw a line across the geometries that I want to cut. So I draw a line and then when I'm done, I right click. And you can see that some new vertices have showed up here. Uh, and you can now see if I reload, oh, no, this is the multi-point layer. Let's open up the attributes table for the multi-line layer. <clears throat> and if I save this and refresh it, it's not working correctly. You have to toggle off editing for the num geometries field to update. Another thing you can do with multi-part layers is actually convert them to a single part layer. And what will happen is all of those individual geometries will turn into their own features. So I've brought, I've opened up the states, US states shapefile again. Uh, if I open up the attribute table for this, we can see that there are 59 entries. I will dock this and let's once again, add that virtual field num geometries. Actually, since this is a, uh, shape file, there's a limit on the number of characters that you can put uh, in a field name. So I'm just going to call this geometries and call this num geometries function with the geometry attribute. All right, we've got that number now. Um, and then what you want to do is head up to vector geometry tools, multi-part to single parts. And when I click on that, it's going to ask me which layer I want as my input layer, and then what file I might want as my output layer. Right now, I'm just gonna use a temporary layer and run this. Now, the thing to consider is, if I look at the number of geometries here, we've got numbers in the thousands. So this, this table of 59 entries is going to turn into a new table with thousands of entries. So it might take a little bit of time. I'm going to click run. All right, that was pretty fast. And we can see it created a new table called single parts, a new layer. I'm going to uncheck the previous one and close its table. And I'm going to right click on this new single parts layer, open up the attribute table. And we can see that there's over 16,000 entries now. And what happened to the attributes of those multi-part features are now applied to all of the single part features that were generated from it. So, so that we can see that the Alabama multi-part feature has turned into 35 entries of uh, single part features and they all have the same state, they all have the same name, same FIPS code, et cetera, et cetera. You can see also that the geometries field also copied over to them, which is at this point not correct. Uh, because they all actually rep are, represent one geometry. That covers the basics of multi-part feature creation and editing. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you're a GIS expert and you have some good examples of multi-point features, please also leave a comment or hit me up on Mastodon. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, learned something, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.